Um, if uh, an instance initializer can um, throw an exception and um, I suppose I checked exception at this point then um, um, provided it's not caught um, uh, that exception must be declared in the throws clause of every uh, constructor. Now um, uh, this is because um, the initialization code um, of course is um, is inserted after every call to super and um, uh, that exception can't be caught there because um, constructors have to start with super or this and not try so you can't catch any exception there of course you can catch it if it's if it's caught within uh, within the uh, uh, instance initializer and then it's okay you don't have to worry but uh, if it gets past there, if it leaks out as it were, then um, uh, then uh, uh, you can't catch it in the in the constructors. And um, um, of course, um, eventually, of course, uh, all constructors um, eventually have to end up eventually calling super. So it sort of works its way backwards and sort of propagates into all of the constructors. So all the constructors in the chain end up with the same problem, and so that means you've got to got to have this uh, um, uh, throws clause on every constructor. So uh, anyway, here's an example anyway that makes it a bit clearer. Um, I've declared two exceptions here: my ex1 extends exception in my ex2, and uh, these are both checked exceptions, so uh, they've got to be either declared or has thrown or or caught and uh, here's a class C and um, uh, in the initialization um, instance initializer here uh, there's a possibility of it being thrown thrown by x1 and it's not caught within there so uh, we've got to take care of it and uh, um, there's a call to some method and uh, it has the potential to throw my ex2. At least it declares that, even if it doesn't. So the fact that it declares it means that it's got to got to be covered. Now straight away that means that um, uh, because this constructor here is going to have super in it, and after super is going to be this uh, um, instance uh, um, initializer stuff. Um, it's going to have to declare that it throws my x1 and my x2. So that's got to go in there. And now in this um, uh, subclass here, because that uh, extends C, uh, we've got the same problem again because um, if you take a look at this, uh, this here, this um, well, the compiler effectively inserts a call to super, which is a of course a call to that and that can throw those two exceptions so they've got to be declared here because you can't catch them you can't insert a try in is the first statement because it's automatically super uh, so they've got to be declared there and um, the same reasoning applies here because this uh, this constructor here calls this one here and uh, that can throw those two exceptions so they've got to be declared there because there's no way that you can catch them within this procedure, this um, constructor rather here. Right then, if we take a look at this, um, this is a, another subclass, C2 here, which extends C again, and here straight away we get an error because the default compiler generated constructor that goes in there um, does not have a throws clause. So you will get an error if you just write that down. Uh, right, uh, uh, now although um, although constructors can't be overridden, they can call methods which can be overridden and uh, that can lead to some tricky sort of um, output and uh, this is a, an example just to illustrate uh, some of the more tricky things that can happen. So what we've got here is uh, 
there's an ordinary class super C with a value in it and a constructor there and the constructor calls this method M and M sets the value there to 1, 2, 3 and it does this, it prints out in super C val equals and the value of value which will be 1, 2, 3 hopefully and uh, all that looks fine and along comes somebody and writes this class C down here which extends that and uh, I put an extra x equals 99 in there and uh, a constructor which uh, calls that and it's overridden the value of m with this which simply prints out in C val equals and the value of val which is inherited and the value of x which is there Right, now if we do this in main here and you see then what happens? Well it looks a bit tricky but if you follow the rules it's um, fairly straightforward. Right, this is called to the constructor C. What does this do? Well we get to here and um, there's no call to super there so of course the first thing that happens is a call to the default super. And uh, that will be a call to this constructor there and what does that do? That calls m. Now the value of the implicit pointer which is passed in, the implicit object is is one which is for this constructor there. It, uh, it, it is rather for, the, for this, uh, for constructing this sort of object of class C. So when we call m there, what happens is that this version of M gets run because that's the class that's being referred to and now this version of M will print out in C val equals and val val of course has not been set at this point so it's zero and X equals and uh, X has not been set either because the initializer has not been run because it's not run until after you come back from super so that will still be that will be zero. So right, that calls that, and uh, when that comes back from that, and then the constructors for this runs, and so x equals ninety nine gets set, and then we get this call to m there, which was this here. So again, what gets printed out is in c val equals, and then val which is still zero and x equals, and now x of course has been set by the initializer, so it's 99. And then just for good measure we call super m. So that calls the m in the super class, which is that one there, so that will set now equal to 1, 2, 3 now, and uh, print out in super c val equals and the value 1, 2, 3, which is what you get there. So so what you've got to be careful of, um, just remember that um, the implicit reference that's passed in here refers to the class that's being constructed at runtime, which in this case is C. Therefore it's going to be C's version of M which runs in not super C's.